Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I would like to show you an interesting project that I've been working on. It's my own design of a front horn mid bass cabinet and it's titled 1274. So before I get started looking at the objective test data on this mid bass front horn, I wanted to read again from Philip Newell's book on recording studio design, fourth edition. And in it, he says, in electromechanical systems such as loudspeakers, the nonlinear restoring forces in the suspension system, speaking of a loudspeaker, are further sources of intermodulation and harmonic distortions. However, the deflections of these suspensions under musical drive can be complex in the extreme, and they bear little relationship to the electrical factors that give rise to nonlinearities in amplifiers, for example. This may explain why 1% of second harmonic distortion may be excellent sounding from one device whilst being intolerable from another. And he goes on to say that another particularly nasty source of loudspeaker intermodulation distortion is magnet BL force factor nonlinearity, which can give rise to many more intermodulation distortion problems. Once again, though, these highly audible, unpleasant products may not be anywhere near adequately, adequately expressed or exposed by a simple total harmonic measurement. So I think it again ties in very um, interestingly with what we're talking about here, where there may be the question about uh, distortion relationships between loudspeakers and amplifiers and he's pointing out that the mechanical mechanisms that cause these distortions in a loudspeaker are in any way comparable to distortion artifacts that are found in an amplifier. So let me get started on this. Uh, it's simply a design review and then also the as-built measured performance uh, of this mid-base cabinet. So here you can see uh, sitting on top the mid bass cabinet is the ES290 by radial and this particular project is using the Lamar field coil mid-range compression driver. Uh, perched on top of that again is the ES1200 by radial on with uh, the TAD uh, TD2001 compression driver for, for the high frequencies. Um, so if we look closely at the mid bass horn cabinet, if I do an exploded view, you can see that it's comprised of 26 layers of 24 millimeter thick birch plywood. And then I'm using a series of, I think about 16 different uh, rods that join it all together. So in terms of manufacturing, um, there's a uh, heavy reliance on the use of CNC to manufacture this. And then it also um, helps with the labor cost in terms of the assembly. So that just gives you a little bit of an idea of how it's how it's constructed and it's using two 12 inch drivers. I've used horn rasp to uh, drive the design as far as a simulation and um, you can see that that uh, simulation bears out in the tested performance. So the drivers are the BNC 12PE32 uh, mid bass drivers which have a very low QTS of only 0.18. So if we go on to the measured performance, actually I'd like to just discuss um, some of the specifications that I was able to achieve in this design. So the sensitivity is 109 dB with one watt using a four volt uh, voltage since these are wired in series for a 16 ohm nominal impedance. The uh, bandwidth that it's intended to cover is 110 hertz to around 450 hertz. And you'll see that I get around plus or minus uh, two dB and the frequency response. It's a compact folded design. And I've simply published um, the intermodulation distortion figures that I was able to achieve. So um, at 100 dB, um, I'm getting below 0.3% IMD. At 110 uh, dB, I'm getting 1% or less than 1%. And then at 120, uh, I'm getting less than 10%. And yes, I did test it at 120 decibels with hearing protection. Um, it sounded like a foghorn from a ship. It was quite impressive. So the, uh, like I mentioned, it's 27 layers of birch ply. And I have a drawing here of the overall physical dimensions. So um, it's fairly compact for what it's able to achieve. So I have uh, 81 centimeters or 32 inches on the width, and then it's 30 inches deep or 76 centimeters deep. 
and I've I've tried to keep the height as low as possible so that it positions your um, your mid-range and high frequency drivers at an optimal listening height so you can see here that I'm kind of straddling between um, the optimum between um, I, I go with 36 inches as an optimum listening height for the treble so you can see here I'm just slightly above that for the treble there so so that's a good result and you know so you can see the the drivers are uh, physically time aligned so let me go back and look at the measured performance um, also again here's some renderings um, from blender just what the the uh, cabinet looks like in relation to a, a human so here's the construction of the cabinet this was this photo was taken when I was assembling the mid base cabinet you can see the rods going through at various points and uh, so the drivers are accessible by simply removing either the top or bottom uh, panel which is two layers of birch ply so uh, the customer that I'm building this for is uh, doing a layer of birch ply and a layer of solid walnut for the top and bottom panels and you can see here this is the 12 inch mid base wired in and this is again just to show the scale uh, the on the far left there that's um, the Dayton 15 inch subwoofers for in my own personal system and you can see a remote control there just to kind of give you a sense of the overall scale this is in its unfinished state um, without any sanding or staining so I was able to assemble it and get some uh, performance data uh, before sending it off to be painted so the frequency response you can see here um, this this response is actually set at one watt of input power to the mid base cabinet so you can see here it's it's nearly approaching 110 db sensitivity um, so a very good result there's no significant um, resonances or peaks you can smell nothing of concern here the step response is showing a very clean uh, fast step response burst decay is is uh, relatively clean uh, for a mid base and it's not known uh, the impact of the room acoustics in this in this chart um, so it's quite a heavy cabinet so I wasn't able to move it outside for for any better testing so these results actually could be better uh, potentially better uh, you see the impedance uh, sweep here which reveals that the fundamental resonance of the driver is is pegged at just above uh, 50 Hertz around 55 Hertz so that's um, basically showing you that the um, resonance is a full octave of below the cutoff of the horn so if we're getting around 110 db for the low frequency cutoff then our fundamental resonance is is well distanced uh, below the cutoff of the horn and so that's providing uh, a nice flat phase response across the bandwidth of the horn so looking at harmonic distortion you can see i started with 90 db and distortion probably at 90 db i'm below the noise floor uh, of my test setup raising it up to 95 db we're still um we're still well below 0.1 percent here so um the second harmonic is uh, like 0.05 percent like extremely no low numbers uh even at 100 decibels um still second harmonic does not rise above 0.1 percent if we move on to the uh, intermodulation distortion uh, I've like I've shown in the previous video at 100 DB so I'm using 100 DB as my reference level since this equates to around 93 DB from the listening chair assuming that you have a, a stereo pair of base cabinets um, and you're about two and a half to three meters listening distance so this would this would be represented representative of a listening level that would be typical in a large uh, listening space for home hi-fi and so you can see again that the intermodulation distortion is extremely low it's uh, below 0.3 uh, percent intermodulation so um, I hope you found that interesting um, I'm yeah <laughs> what else is there to say uh, I've put my uh, I'll post the blog link in the description and then I've also made references to some of the quotes that I've 
uh, mentioned earlier in the video. So there you have it. Take care and have a great day.